Hello and welcome to another episode of Lemur's Corner. I am Lemur and today we are going to be handling some Q&A questions around specifically our uh, server settings videos and our playing with friends and dedicated servers and all those questions. These are common questions I see in the comments down below. I try to answer them as much as I can but the same question over and over gets uh, frustrating because he's saying the same thing over and over. So I am going to do this specific video to try to answer some of those questions directly uh, and, and very clearly and put out there. We're going to go through a total of 10 questions on this one. They should be pretty quick, but I want to cover them all very clearly. Uh, first one is going to be on our can you play uh, cross play between PS4 and Xbox? And the answer is no, 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 no. PS4 and Xbox are not cross playable. Uh, the only options which will tie in with number two and number three um, for crossplay are going to be Xbox and Microsoft and Steam and Epic Games. Those are two separate types of crossplay, and we'll get to those next. So the second question is asking about Epic Games. What can you do? How does that play? And what crossplays are enabled? Uh, Epic Games is only able to play with Steam if the Steam server is running zero mods. That is correct. Zero mods. Epic is not classified. Neither is Xbox. Neither is mobile. Neither is PS4. The only platform that you can play with mods is on Steam. So if you want to play crossplay between Steam and Epic Games, because those are the only two that can crossplay that are between Steam and Epic Games, it's the only way you can play with two systems other than the other one we're going to get to next, uh, is simply put that. You can play those, but they cannot have a mod. So you cannot have a single mod on there, and you can enable that crossplay, and that is done in their settings uh, specifically. If you run through a manager, you can do it through the manager. If not, you just click crossplay enabled on your server settings. That brings us to number three, and that is the Windows versus Steam version. So Windows is the one that you purchase through the Microsoft Store. Steam is purchased through Steam. As I said, Steam is only cross-play enabled with Epic Games version, as where the Windows version is cross-play enabled with Xbox. So that is the only option that you actually have to play a console with a PC, and you can host it and cross-play enable on there is the Windows version and the Xbox but that does require you to have a second system. Now, now I'm not saying you have to have an Xbox. You could host on your PC on the Microsoft version, on your PC Microsoft for store version, and play on your Xbox through there. The easiest way to handle that always is to have the server added as a friend, and then you join as a friend. Uh, the most common issue that I see with people who have Xbox and PS4 being able to join dedicated servers and hosting dedicated servers is the biggest thing is understanding that there are NAT requirements and upload issues. Um, we're going to we'll briefly step into those, um, and this is going to fall into number four, that this NAT issue that is commonly found is basically... Um, service providers give you one IP and they divide that IP up over all your devices uh, and you get ports off that IP. It's extremely hard and it, your upload is normally much lower than your download. Your download is the access for you to say, I want this off the internet, give it to me. Your upload is sending the information back. If you're hosting a dedicated server, it goes off your upload, not your download. So if you have a very low upload, a lot of people can't connect because you just can't manage the upload time to give them what they need or it's going to be extremely laggy. Uh, and the second thing is that NAT server. This is your way of getting around. The only way to get around that many times is to have a separate IP for that dedicated address. So if you have AT&T, for an example, um, you cannot have two Xboxes on the same IP and have them both running and be able to play them together. You literally have to have separate IPs for each one of those, and you can do that through AT&T, and you have to pay extra on your monthly bill. But that's what I'm trying to say here. Hosting a dedicated server is not just about having a second system or having it. So with that being said, talking about those dedicated servers, if you do have one, um, is or if you want to host one, the biggest thing that I get asked a lot is, uh, the dedicated server question, and this is number four, which is basically going to be, um, if do I need to leave my Xbox on in order to have a dedicated server, and do I have to leave it always running? It's up to you when you want it to be on. If you don't want it to be on 24-7, then when you turn it off, it'll save and be off, and when you turn it back on, it'll be accessible and playable. Uh, however, if you want it accessible by everyone 24-7 and constantly running, then yes, the Xbox or PC must stay on, or whatever it is, must stay on 24-7 so that people can access it 24-7 and must stay hosting a dedicated server. Um, so that's the biggest thing you have to understand there with that one. Uh, number five, uh, we've talked about this before, but I want to specifically talk about it. What systems, uh, councils, and all that kind of stuff, or PC systems can play, or platforms can play mods. And literally the only platform that can do any mods is Steam version on PC. 
That's it. No more. No other ones. Only Steam version on PC has mods right now. It's the only one that has access to it. Um, and so that's the only way you can access those. And the next one's going to be the tether. The tether is going to be how do you can you modify the tether? And right now, the only one that you can modify the tether on is the Steam version of the game. And that is because you can modify things a lot more, just like in mods and stuff like that. And the system can actually handle it. Uh, therefore, and the Microsoft version, PS4, Epic Games version, all that stuff, mobile version, you cannot modify the tether. So if you're on a non-dedicated and you're limited on that non-dedicated to the size, only on PC can you extend that tether to where you can reach across the world because the computer can actually handle it. Uh, the, P the Xboxes and stuff cannot handle it, so you cannot adjust that tether. The next is a common thing that we have where people say, well, how am I supposed to do this? I don't own two Xboxes. Um, that's just insane that I would have to own two Xboxes in order to host a dedicated server. Uh, and I, it's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. Unfortunately, I can't change that. Um, as I said, though, you do have the option to do it off your PC if you wanted to, if you want to host off your PC, but it has to stay on through the Microsoft Store version and then play it on Xbox if you wanted to. Um, the other option, as we've talked about before, is you can rent a server. Uh, I'm going to bring up one very specific server provider um, because they have one for every single system. Other server providers don't have access to every other system, uh, and that is Nitrado. Nitrado is a renting server where you pay anywhere, uh, depending on it. It's basically paid off of how much RAM, how much memory usage you're using, uh, what accesses you want, and you have all the administrative features that you could possibly want, and how many players you want the server to be maxed out at. So, uh, roughly, it's about two dollars a person. So, if you want a ten-person server, it's going to cost you about twenty bucks a month. Uh, it can be less, it can be more. It's going to be based off of things. I'm giving you rough numbers. There's so many things on there. Um, you can go there and choose to go there if you want. They do Xbox, PS4, PC, Steam. TC Epic, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, and that's completely up to you if you want to rent that. That is a monthly fee that you're going to have to pay if you want to. I am saying if you want to host your own dedicated server, this is how you do it. You have to have a second box or you have to rent a server. That's it. Those are the only two options that you can do to do it. Uh, if it's on PC, there are other ways to do it, but that is a very technologically, you know, you can do virtual. I don't want to get too much into it, but there are other ways to do it on PC, on Steam um, that we'll get into maybe in another video, but specifically for this one in general, you have to host it yourself through a second box or uh, you have to rent it. Uh, if you're on PC, Steam, obviously there are other options and many of those people know what those other options are. Uh, the next one is going to be talking about saving servers. So saving servers, what we're talking about is people always a lot of times ask, uh, do we have access to saving our servers? How do the servers save? What happens with them? Uh, pretty much every time you go to shut off the server, if you shut it off correctly, the server will save. You can also set it on an auto save function where it saves every hour, 15 minutes, whatever you want for your thing. Um, for my case, for my servers, I host them myself. I have it where every time it goes to do an update backup or anything of that nature, minus barring a crash because you cannot save you cannot predict the crash to happen they just crash and sometimes you do get a rollback uh, you have to have the auto save enabled and when it goes to shut down it force saves before it shuts down uh, allowing people to get off and all that fun stuff so i've set all those settings up within my server to help with those decisions and try to get those things too uh, so that covers all the points that i wanted to cover here um, this is because I wanted to cover a lot of those questions. I know there's a lot of them out there. Um, you're going to just kind of see some background stuff happening on ARC in the background. Uh, I didn't want to get too specific into it. You're going to see some text rolling across the screen. But in general, that's really all we're covering today for this video. Uh, if you have further questions beyond that, you can leave them down in the comments down below. I will always answer, try my best to answer those questions if I can. Um, if you're saying build, you know, if, if, if uh, it's build me a 30x time server, well, I mean, it's I can't just jump in for every request out there. I would love to um but you know i get those requests daily and it's i can't just be building servers for everyone every day uh, i understand that you want to do that that's why i try to give you the information to where you can make decisions and adjust the settings as you see fit um, because it's the best way to understand those server settings and that's why i have access to all those videos um, uh, and so if you have any questions on those related to a specific setting or you're confused on something please ask them down below i will do my best to answer those questions in the fastest time possible uh, if you are new to the server or to the <laughs> channel make sure you subscribe hit that bell for notifications if you like the video give it a thumbs up and as always i hope you have a fantastic day and we see you on the next episode of lemur's corner